This tutorial will show you how to use Gecko on Windows. So you might want to have Gecko available on your desktop or taskbar without having to launch the Airspace Home application. To do that, you can find Gecko on your hard drive. Go to the Windows Explorer and type in percentage sign local app data percentage sign slash airspace apps. And this will bring you to a folder that contains all the airspace applications that you've downloaded. In this case, you'll see Gecko, and then you can take the executable and, for example, create a link on your desktop. And from that point onwards, you can use Gecko by just double clicking as usual. So now that Gecko is launched, you can see that there is a taskbar icon here. This allows you to still keep Gecko running when you close the main window. When you click on the taskbar icon, the main window appears again and you can right click to toggle the window visibility or to exit Gecko. So let's launch Gecko again. On Windows, it's also possible to control software synthesizers with Gecko. However, there is no integrated virtual MIDI system in Windows. But you can get this functionality by downloading virtual MIDI drivers that are freely available. These are the two drivers that we recommend. The first one is called Loop MIDI, and it's only available for personal use and non-commercial use, but it's the most intuitive and easiest to get started with. And then there's Copperlan, that's a much more comprehensive package, allows you a lot more flexibility, and it's available for commercial purposes, but a little bit more difficult to use. So after both have been installed, you will see in your document settings four virtual MIDI ports, VMIDI 1 to 4. These belong to Coppolan and we'll get to those in a minute. Let's first start by configuring Loop MIDI, if that's the one that you want to use. So double click the Loop MIDI icon and it will bring up a configuration panel. And then you can just click the plus sign here to add a new virtual MIDI port. In the output port drop-down menu, you can then select loop MIDI port for Gecko to use. Press OK. And when I then assign a MIDI message for a particular gesture, you will see in the loop MIDI configuration window that there is data being sent through the virtual MIDI port. Now I can go to another software synthesizer, for example here Machine, go to the MIDI configuration settings and make sure that in the MIDI inputs, the loop MIDI port that I selected for Gecko is turned on also. And when that is done, I can use MIDI Learn capabilities of my software to actually control a parameter with Gecko. So this is Macro Control 1, I'm starting MIDI Learn, and as I move my hand now, it has tied the up and down movement to the cutoff frequency of this sound. So, let's now remove this loop MIDI port and do the configuration through Copperlan. So Coppolan has those four virtual MIDI ports. When you launch the Coppolan Manager, you will see that in the Edit section, you can click on MIDI, MIDI settings, and select the number of MIDI ports that you want to have available. Four is a good number. It gives you some flexibility without overloading the system. So when I now select the virtual MIDI port one that belongs to Coppolan with Gecko, and make sure that it's also active in my software synthesizer. You will, however, see that even though Gecko is sending out MIDI, it's not reaching the software synthesizer. This is because in Copperlan, none of the connections between the different virtual ports are made automatically. So Gecko sends out over the virtual MIDI output while your software synthesizer receives the MIDI data over a virtual MIDI input. So to connect those together, you have to go to the connect panel in Copperlan, click on MIDI, virtual MIDI 1, use a virtual MIDI cable, 
and add that cable so that it connects to Virtual MIDI 1. So this connects the Virtual MIDI output to the Virtual MIDI input. And now I can just use my hand again to control that filter cutoff. Mm -hmm. 